My fiancé is Christopher, 29, and we've been together for six years. He has severe ADHD but has always been medicated from the moment I met him, so most of his behaviours, tics and stimming, were very limited and mild. He had moments, of course, but they were rare and infrequent. Well, as of two months ago, he decided he didn't want to be on medications anymore and went off them cold turkey. Since then, there's not been a quiet moment in my household, especially since he quit his job randomly last month after stating that since he is this brand new person, he's realized he can't work for the company he was working for. He's been applying for different jobs, but he ultimately decides after going for interviews that the job isn't for him because they ask too much for too little of pay. So now I own my own business and work out of my house. I make more than enough to support us both, but I'm more or less angry that I can't even hear myself think anymore and I've been falling behind with my work. For instance, he will randomly start screaming out made-up song lyrics, start doing the Donny from Wild Thornberry's yell, screeches like a dinosaur, or even just repeat something he found funny a million times over in the loudest voice possible while getting aggressively into dancing, as in purposely knocking crap over while crumping. I can't do it anymore. I've had a non-stop migraine for weeks. Even when he's playing video games, he finds a reason to scream bloody murder, and I admittedly cannot stand being in my own house anymore. I've begged him to tone it down, get back on his meds, or even try natural remedies for all I care. Just do something. But nope, he refuses, states that he's comfortable with the way he is, and I need to learn to accept that. I truly can't, though. I can sit there in my office doing my order taking for my company and he'll bust through the door screaming made up song lyrics. I'm never left alone, at all. And then, after he's had his fun, he crashes and gets irritable. So today, he is being over the top extra and hasn't stopped since he woke up. I have so much crap to do today and he will not quit. He knows I'm getting irritated and he just laughs it off and repeats the same BS 10 minutes later. So I told him he needed to quiet down or leave for the day because he was holding me back. He immediately looked wounded and slammed out of the house. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I am so sorry you have to go through this. I want to say first, both my husband and I have severe ADHD and are happily and healthily medicated. It's his right to live how he wants to live. But it's your right to realize that this isn't the person you fell in love with and you can't live with this brand new person anymore. You are effectively a prisoner in your home being subjected to random terrifying bursts of noise and violence, the breaking of things. Put him out and put him behind you. I know this is easier said than done and I am so sorry, but you're not obligated to spend your life being terrorized by a man who doesn't love you enough to care that he's hurting you. The problem isn't his ADHD or the medication. He doesn't care that you're hurting. This relationship is over. Agree with this 100%. This is no P not understanding him or his disorder. What he's doing is not fair to OP at all. He's spiraling and blowing up his life in the process and hers. This is not the man she chose to be with, and it's completely fair to leave him over it. Info. Have you considered calling a locksmith and changing the locks before he returns? Way to get straight to the point. Seriously, call a locksmith and a moving company. You will save money not taking care of his butt by spending the little bit of money to make sure he can't get back in your house and all the crap is out front for him to come get. Tell him he has a choice. Get back on his meds or get out. Stop financially supporting this person. They are taking advantage of you. This is so damn far from okay. Actually, this doesn't sound like just ADHD. Sounds like you have a bigger problem on your hands. It also sounds like he's definitely screwing himself over by quitting his medication. Cold turkey. And this could seriously cause worse behavioural issues unless you confront this and demand that he goes back to his doctor to find out what can be done to stop this. If he refuses to get help, I think a breakup should be considered soon. I just job hopped and landed a job at a frankly ridiculous salary. I went from making 120,000 doing software engineering to a 310,000 in a senior systems engineering role, plus a sign-on bonus and stock options. It's at a startup company that's high risk, high reward, so it's a gamble if the company will still exist in a few years, but for now, it's great. I decided I didn't want to change my lifestyle at all since the money was probably temporary, so I kept spending like always and just put all the extra money into maxing out my retirement savings and paying down my house. 
I've also been in a relationship with my boyfriend Jason for about a year and a half. He makes 90000 so he's doing really well himself. We're in a low cost of living rural area and he's still making a lot more than average here. But after I got the new job he started being really critical of how I spend. Or don't. Like I want to build a sunroom gazebo for my house so I went to the construction material recycling and reuse centre to buy some lumber and some vintage windows to make it. Woodworking and DIY are genuinely a hobby of mine, but my boyfriend made fun of me for still going to the junkyard to buy the gazebo even when I could afford to hire a contractor. But the bigger fight has been about a vacation. We'd planned a road trip in the summer, camping most of the way and staying in hotels a night or two a week to shower and stay near cities we visit. But after I got the new job, he wanted to stay in hotels every night. I was kind of stressed about that because I don't want to start spending like I'll always have this kind of cash flow and have that lifestyle creep up since I know it might not last. And I don't want to feel disappointed or struggle when I have to scale back my spending. It was really important to me to put away whatever extra money that's temporarily coming through for the future. But my boyfriend told me I was ridiculous wanting to sleep on the ground on our vacation when I was making so much. I said I love camping. I was looking forward to all the camping and hiking and climbing we'd planned. And he snapped at me, saying that I seem to love everything that's cheap or free, and it's kind of entitled, honestly. I said if anyone's acting entitled, it's honestly him when he just wanted me to pay for something he didn't even ask if I wanted. Didn't offer to split the cost or anything. It's like he just saw me making more and decided he wanted to spend it. We had this big fight where he said I was all me, 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 only caring about my house and my retirement and how I'd spend thousands a month paying my mortgage faster than I needed to but wouldn't even do the minimum to make our vacation nice. Am I the idiot for wanting to use the money coming in from a new job to save for the future? Your boyfriend sounds like he has extremely different financial values from you. The concerning thing here is that he refuses to respect your financial values and seeks to impose his on you. He absolutely feels entitled to your money. It's fantastic this happened now because he's showing you who he is before the relationship gets more serious. End it. This isn't the guy. Yeah, OP seriously needs to rethink this relationship. He's a greedy, manipulative, entitled idiot. Anyone wanting to control how you spend your money is a red flag. Plus, it's very likely this job is temporary. Most startups don't last very long. So saving it to ensure she has a comfortable retirement, plus paying off her mortgage, is the smartest thing she could do for her future. Also, calling her entitled, talk about projection, you are the idiot. So you're making 190000 more than you were, and you can't even spend a wee bit of that on holiday? It's your money and you're saving it for both of your futures. There's no need to be as cheap as you are when it's a matter of a couple of thousand out of the extra 190000 you're going to get for a couple of years. He's not exactly asking for a $70,000 car or anything. It's your cheapness that's actually a problem. I, 21 female, have an apartment two streets from my family's house. I have a young teen sister who wanted a way to make easy cash, so I asked her if she could come over before to let the dogs out to use the bathroom. My apartment is across the street from the school and after school to feed the dogs and let them out and sit with them for a little while or for however long she wanted to go away from home for a little bit. She agreed and so did my parents. I have the Ring doorbell app and it was the third day she was house sitting. I never checked but I was just bored and saw her and three other girls walk in. I never told her people could come over so I texted her and she said it was friends from school. I told her they needed to leave. She stopped answering my text and about two hours later, I got the notification they were leaving. I was upset but thought as long as nothing was stolen, then I guess it was okay. When I got home, my bedroom was a mess. Clothes were everywhere. I'm assuming my sister was trying them on. One of my Michael Kors bags was gone. I was also given a bottle of Petrus wine for my 21st birthday that I hadn't opened yet. I found it half full in the back of my cabinet wide open. I was obviously really mad. I texted my sister and told her that she was no longer getting paid, that my missing bag would be returned, or I'd be talking to our parents. I texted my mom and snitched on my sister drinking because I was mad and a young teen shouldn't be drinking. My sister texted me back calling me a witch and saying that I needed to pay her or else I lied because she fed the dogs every day. I told her you don't get paid when you trash a house and steal. My sister is really mad, she's grounded, 
and my mom's trying to find out the girl's parents' names. I don't think I'm the idiot because, yeah, she fed the dogs, but things are missing now and my house is a mess. Am I the idiot? Holy crap. They destroyed your bedroom, stole from you, and drank your own alcohol in your apartment while you were away? I wouldn't pay her, period. Change your locks if you have to and ban her from your house. Not the idiot. Technically, you'll get paid for labor, but you also get billed for damages. So, dog sitting owed $5 to $10, minus the bag $200, wine $4,000, and house cleanup $10. That's being generous and assuming the time of both sisters is equally valuable and the cleanup time will not take more than the destruction did. Sis was paid and still owes $4,200. A verbal agreement constitutes a contract. Pay her and give her a bill for damages and losses. That's the typical legal advice. If she wants to give up her friends for a reduced bill, that can be offered. But in the end, it's her responsibility. On the side... Did you keep the video of them entering? With a yearbook, you should be able to figure out who they are. Oh, the yearbook is genius. And forget the cause bag. The average price of a bottle of Chateau Petrus is more than $4,000. This is grand theft. Tell your sister that if you don't get full satisfaction, you're filing a police report and making a claim for vandalism and theft with your renter's insurance, and they will prosecute it. This is how your sister learns a lesson about treating other people's homes and items with respect. I, 25 female, and my fiancé Zach, 24 male, are getting married in a couple of months. Zach has a brother Josh, 27, who recently had twins with his wife, Amber, 24. I invited Amber to my bachelorette party. On the night of the party, my husband organized a game night for a few of his brothers and friends since they're doing the actual bachelor party a few weeks after mine, since one of his brothers will be in town. This wasn't a problem until I realized there would be no one to watch Amber and Josh's twins. They're pretty low income, so there's no way they'd be able to afford a babysitter. We also know that they don't have friends who could watch them, and Amber's family lives out of state. So we decided to let Amber know that there was a change of plans. Josh has barely seen his family since the twins were born and he's been working full-time on top of being a new dad and we felt like it was important that they get to spend time together and he gets a little break. When I called Amber to tell her about the change in plans, she started crying. She said she'd been looking forward to it for weeks and was crushed. I tried to explain our reasoning, but it made her more upset. I wasn't really getting through to her, so I just told her I had to go. I told my friend about it the next day and she thought I was in the wrong, so am I the idiot? Edit, we know they're struggling financially, as Josh has told Zach this. Our family was busy, either with my party or the game night, and we knew that they didn't have friends they trusted to watch the twins. You are the idiot. You decided she should stay at home while your brother has a break, so uninvited her? Since when do you decide how they should sort out childcare or who has a break in their family? The audacity! Bridezilla is emerging. OP could have offered to pay for a babysitter since they realized the timing of the parties was an imposition. And the cherry on top is that this isn't even the bachelor party. It's like a low-key pre-party, and Josh will get to have his break at the actual bachelor party in a few weeks. Like it wasn't OP's choice to make, but even if it were, she made the absolute wrong one. You are the idiot, OP, and I can't even believe you had to come here to find that out. It's crappy to infantilize someone by taking away their agency, which is exactly what you did. They get to decide who they trust with their children. They get to decide what they do or do not spend their money on. And if they can't find someone to watch the kids, they get to decide who stays home to watch them. Uninviting someone who has done nothing to you from a party is always crappy. The poor girl was so excited. My fiancé Ashton had a rough childhood. The oldest of five with four special needs siblings, all on the spectrum, parents who struggled and did not ever make him feel like he was as important as his siblings. It wasn't until he was 11 and someone got his maternal grandfather involved that he had someone who cared. The way Ash talks about this, his parents tried to meet his fundamental needs but never prioritized him or sacrificed for him the way they did for others. Examples. His 10th birthday was the first one for which he was supposed to get a birthday party. 
Three of his four siblings fell ill the day before. The non-ill sibling did not like to go outside the house, and neither mom nor dad wanted to deal with three sick kids and one special needs kid, so they cancelled the party, and they never made up for it. His best friend's parents offered to take him for the day so he could have fun, and they turned them down. For dinner that night, he got a bland meal suitable for people who were sick. No cake, no anything nice for him. It was never made up for either, and they got mad at him for holding it against them. They wouldn't even let him make a sandwich and told him he was being a brat. He really wanted to move into the basement so he could have his own room since he shared with his brothers and couldn't have too much stuff in case it set them off. The basement could be a bedroom and was safe, but his parents said no. They told him it wasn't fair to isolate himself and that his brothers would miss him. So, he spent 18 years in a room with no personality, where he's woken up every night by his brothers, who didn't sleep well, and was scolded for trying to move into the basement anyway. When his maternal grandpa stepped in, a lot of arguments went down. Ash said his grandpa saved him, that he was so angry and felt so lost. His parents never changed. They said he was selfish to ask them to sacrifice for him sometimes like they did all the time for his siblings. He's had nothing to do with them in years. I never actually met them. I have met his paternal family, grandparents and three uncles. The grandparents came to me about how his parents should be invited to the wedding and how I should make an effort to let them celebrate their son and share in his joy. They'd already been told no by Ash. I'd already told them no, but they persisted, so I told them I would not give them, Ash's parents, a chance to play doting parents when they never have been. They told me I only heard Ash's side. I said I also have his grandpa, who witnessed a lot. They then said I was being spiteful and mean. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, and neither is your fiancé. If he doesn't want them there, they shouldn't be there. You're paying for the wedding, and the day is about you two, not his parents. It's unfortunate but understandable that he doesn't want them around. If photos, videos and memories of that day will be tainted by their presence, they shouldn't be there. You only know half the story which is being told by Ash and if you heard the other side you would feel different. But all that matters is how Ash perceives things and how he feels about his family, regardless of the other side. They could be the most amazing people in the world, but Ash's experiences and views are what they are and are all that matter here, plus they're backed up by grandfather. Seriously, screw them for how they treated your fiancé. Everyone deserves to have even a little something nice on their birthday. All it would take is a simple cupcake from the store and he likely wouldn't have been as resentful, at least not for that particular instance. It's one thing to have to pay extra attention to your children's medical and emotional needs, but that doesn't give you permission to neglect another child in favour of the others.